there's no question that a very close friend of mine, Johann Rupert, did give, you know, convinced he supported Cyril for the right reason, so that David mm -hmm. Mabuza would cross the floor and Cyril would be in charge. But I think right. Cyril's blown all his political capital with those sort of people. They're not going to support him anymore. But where's ABSA? Where's, you know, Standard Bank? Where's, you know, FNB? Why aren't they standing up? Well, when you look at the board of directors, mm -hmm. and they're friends of mine then, Koko Sawazi, great guy. I think he's on the board of one of those banks with right. MTN. He's got to stand up and say, enough's enough. Sela Moloko, I love him. He's got to stand up. Enough's enough. They're all sitting on those boards. You know, Paul Henratty, he's got to say, enough's enough. Publicly. All right, everybody. Good morning again. This is Soli Mueng at Worldview, the number one media company. This is where we explore everyone's perspectives on all things that can broad in our old world, world view. Today we have none other than Rob Hesop. Rob, I don't know where I'm going to start the discussion with you. I've been thinking about this all night. <laughs> you can go in any direction you want. So, I love you, uh, Sully. You're a wonderful I, I, friend. I was going through your, your resume. It's too long, too impressive. And I thought maybe I should just say to people, just Google this man. Google him. You'll find him there on the internet. <laughs> yeah, maybe my new tagline is rich, infamous. There you infamous. Go. Rich, infamous. <laughs> infamous. And very, I think I'd add a third word, very charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, once you've met Rob, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be really, really hard to, to want to unmeet him. <laughs> yeah. There you go. But I'm anyway, Rob, way. so much to talk about. Let's, let's, let's get this to, done. Um, South Africa, yourself, I mean, you come from a wealthy family in South Africa, you've inherited wealth, but you've also worked hard. You you left your family, you went to study in the UK, in America, MBA, this, and also for impressive uh, qualifications. And you decided one day, you know what, let me go back home because you, you know, your father is still around in Johannesburg. And from what he told me, he doesn't want to leave Johannesburg. So um, I actually haven't inherited anything. Okay. Um, I was born into a very wealthy family. I haven't inherited a thing oh, because okay. mum and dad are alive. <laughs> and all my brothers and sisters. So um, dad is 96 in two uh -huh. weeks' time. Mum is 80, late 80s. They live in Johannesburg. They uh, live in the house that I was born in, in Morningside Santa. Now I was very privileged. I was given every opportunity. And I think I took every opportunity and made the best of it. But I've had failure. I've had success. And uh, I, just, I just love this country. I mean, I'm, I'm African, I'm South African. I came back five and a half years ago after 31 years abroad and uh, with my New Zealand wife and two of my thousands of children, four, two of my four children, little ones. And I don't want to leave. I mean, this is my country. I'm here to stay yeah. and I love it. I love what, it. When, you, when you think back about the time you were, you were able to look at South Africa from, say, 10 years ago from afar and after you came back to South Africa, is it the same country to you or do you wake up every morning thinking we could do better than this i mean are you angry i'm angry i'm disappointed i'm sad you know um i lived overseas from 1985 to 2017 and right. for the first 10 so years of you know democracy mm -hmm. i was so proud i actually <clears throat> was always on the edge of coming back i was like wow you know you uh, bandera what a good job and becky what a good job and right and you know they put it was a, a one south africa a whole south africa policy you know and then zuma came in and cyril came in and they stuffed everything up they've really destroyed it and funny enough i was <laughs> i was reading something about the second world war there's a great book called um uh, berlin it was who's it by but I, but it was quite interesting because the russian soldiers that fought the Germans, you know, on the Eastern Front, yep. you know, survived and won Stalingrad and then pushed into Germany. You know, those troops, you know, whether you like the Russians or not, at the moment, I don't, bad guys, but, you know, they were very brave, like the Allied soldiers, and they were poured into Russia, poured into Berlin. And the frontline soldiers, you know, they would be the ones fighting. Right. They were the heroes, you know, raising the flag of, of the mm -hmm. Reichstag in Berlin and things like that. But the ones that followed, the second wave of soldiers or the follow-up people, 
They were the ones that did mass rape of German women. Right. And this feels like the ANC. Yeah. You know, the first group that, you know, helped remove apartheid, established the first 10 years of government, got us great economic growth, uh, lifted the boats, you know, had water lift all boats. Mm -hmm. They did a super job. They were like the front line of the, of the soldiers. Right. But the people that followed this cabinet, I mean, it's an embarrassment to the world. It's an embarrassment to Africa and it's an embarrassment to everyone in South Africa that these people, Beke Kele, Gwede Matasha, I mean, how the hell, but Rob, with no experience, are they in those jobs? They should be but, yeah, thrown out. I mean, you They're almost... Useless. You almost pressed Simon Becky there. I mean, it's the road started with him. But Becky, first of all, he supported Simon PF and Mugabe. He's the one who who caused the flood, who who, who allowed Simon PF to steal elections in Zimbabwe. And look at what we have now. But he also is the one who was the first post appointed president to interfere with the criminal justice system when he tried to, to shield his buddy, uh, the late Jackie Stilebi from arrest. And he, you know, he removed the NDPP from his office just so that he, he doesn't get to arrest his friend. Uh, and, and, and it started going down from then. That when the president Mandela was in place, the Chinese tried to put pressure on him not to allow the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan spiritual leader in South Africa. Mandela said, Mandela said, no, you can't tell me what to do. This is my friend. Mbeki was put under pressure not to meet with him. So the Dalai Lama came here, and then Becky, I think to please the Chinese, did not meet him. You got too busy to meet him. All right. So under Becky, I think we started losing our backbone a little bit. Of course, things got worse under Zuma and Ramaphosa has been, came with all that hope. But I mean, look at where we are at today. Sorry, I agree with you. The rot set in, but you could even backtrack to the original constitution of the ANC right. pre-94 and say, yeah. It was never, ever going to be a success under the ANC. You know, they got off to a very good start, mm. but the rot was there. You know, the, it, what is the ANC? Is it capitalist or communist? It you know, is it, is it uh, democracy or is it totalitarianism? You've got everyone. You've right. got lunatic communists like Gwede right. Right. You've got complete idiots like Becky Taylor. Ladies and Monday, all those guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, in cabinet, in yeah. cabinet. And, the rest are not very smart of this cabinet, but the rot set in way earlier, you know? Yeah. And, and Be Tebe Becky, okay, he has to take some hits. And you're right, everything you said, he, he, there were mistakes. But to his credit, lately, he's at least telling the truth. You know, he stood up recently at the conference and just said, the ANC has no policy at all to fix the country. Right. And, and they never really did. You know, so yeah, but but you see that what really worries me, Rob, is all these guys from the ANC who, after they retire, they they, they try to come back as saints. Who I don't think that the solutions that South Africa needs will come out of the ANC, whether it's somebody who's still active or somebody who's retired. Mutlante, everybody throws him around as the saint, but he's the man under whom the Scorpios were undone. He's the man who prepared the road for Zuma to come into office when he knew this man was running from the law. He's the man who finally fired the NDP, NDPP Vusipi Koli because Vusipi Koli refused to promise him that he would not touch the Zuma. Mutanda is no angel. And when people like him stand up and they're seen as heroes who, who have the wisdom to lead South Africa, I said, this is powder dash. I agree. But what we need, is courage by people, even the one, the bad guys, even in the past, to stand up and say, you know, it's 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 a disaster. Right. Until that, by the way, big business. I'm going to go get angry with big business very soon on this in the next few minutes. Right. But let's just stick currently to the ANC. Yeah, yeah. Um, some polls have been done recently. You know, France Cronier, ex Institute of Race Relations, and now. He's got a strategic research foundation. Mm -hmm. You must listen to everything he says. Yeah, he's and talking about the post ANC economy mm -hmm. beginning to show its nose, is it? And re but his recent poll that he's done, I think it was Ward 54, right. I think in Soweto. And he, he interviewed a lot of, or he got a company to interview a lot of ANC voters or people that are ANC but not voting. Right. And here's where we are. We're at a very interesting breakpoint. So I, I get a bit nervous when Biz News announces you should be investing now because there's going to be a coalition in 2024 and it's a coalition of the good guys and economic growth is going to take off. Well, right. if we get a coalition of the good guys, which is the DA, Action SA, Encarta, uh, 
COPE, uh, African, ACDP, and VF Plus, mm. those are the good guys. Right. Economic growth will take off. Investment will come in and we'll be safe, but it's going to take a long time to fix. But we're not there yet. So mm. everyone's starting to say, oh, the ANC has gone under 50%, which it has. If Cyril leaves, it'll go under 40. Maybe it'll just completely collapse. Mm -hmm. And it's dropping like a stone, but it's not dead yet. You know, they've got sneaky tricks department, Soviet planning, money they've been stealing. Um, I wouldn't count our chickens yet. I'm still nervous. And we're at a break point right now where, you know, this poll that France did, all the work he's right. done, is right. priceless. And it's sort of saying most of the ANC voters are disillusioned and seriously disappointed with this government. They're looking at them and going, this, these guys are embarrassing. And they admit that the DA does a better job, is a better organization, and is a way, way better prospect for South Africa. But they're not yet ready to mm -hmm. ditch the ANC completely and right. move to the coalition parties, particularly if the coalition are fighting with each other. You know, mm -hmm. Come on, Action SA and DA, just man up, grow up, and work together. Right, you know, but uh, wow. look, but so we've got to make that happen. You know, we're at a crunch point because there, there are enough people out there that have had it with the ANC, won't vote for them, but we've got to get them to actually now vote for one of the many other options. I right. really need that. I think. Um, do you think that? Okay, my view is that 2024 is too far. So much is happening so quickly. Do you think maybe in December Ramaphosa should just lose? Because when he, because the thing is, the longer he stays in power, the more people have hope in the NC, and the NC is not going to give us answers for South Africa. But if he falls in December, maybe the the, the avalanche will take will pick up speed, and South Africans will wake up and realize that we really need change. We need, really need to save South Africa. What do you think? Funny enough, a number of people that I really respect have said, "Rob, stop." criticizing the ANC. They're eating themselves. You don't need to keep saying they're idiots and lunatics and criminals, which they are. This cabinet, they're destroying themselves. They're yeah. just eating one another and it's over. They're gonna... So the question is, should Ram Ramaphosa will get reelected in December? Are you saying- But he doesn't statement? deserve to. He doesn't you deserve You think he will? To. Yeah, I think he will, but he doesn't okay. deserve to. He's okay. completely spineless. He's is he the least used. of the devils for you? Yes, he's the least okay. of the devils. But I mean, I'd rather have, let's face the devils right. and let's fight. Right. Let's see who the evil is and let's be ready to fight politically right. and whatever somebody, else is required. Somebody said to me, I think even the premier of the of, of uh, Houting once said, look, the NC knows that it needs Ramaphosa. He's the nicer face of them all. If they throw him to the dogs, they know it's going to be really hard for them. But the, the truth is, South Africa, I mean, the ANC still has the electoral mandate until 2024 to govern South Africa. If they get rid of the ANC, they might put anybody else, the Nkosas and Adlamini Zuma, God knows who else out there, to run Jeez. us to 2024, yeah. and then it's going to be trouble. There's going to be trouble. I mean, if you ask anyone, and maybe I should ask you, say, if you look at the senior part of the ANC, and let's call, I don't want to call Cyril a good guy. I think he's spineless and useless. And he's propped up by business people who think, oh, yeah. we're terrified of RET. Let's support Cyril. They're not going to do that anymore. He's lost all his support. Mm -hmm. and there's some big business names that I could, right, could right, mention right. that I probably won't. <laughs> not this time around. You know who I'm going to say. Yes. We've been propping him up. So if if you see Cyril, I'm not going to call but him. Just, if you see minute, Cyril as, bro, as... Just a minute. Why are you prepared to name politicians but not business people? Because I'm tired of saying, when's Adrian Gore going to stand up and, and okay. say the ANC is a disaster and okay. Cyril has let us down? And you know, I'm tired of, you know, he's a, he's a business hero and he's not evil. He's not a bad guy. He's just wrong, you know? Right. You know, and he's probably not very happy with me, but yeah. I'm sure we can make up one day and others. So there we go. There's your name. You know, and there's no question that a very close friend of mine, Johan Rupert, did give, you know, a couple convinced he supported Cyril for the right reason, so that David mm -hmm. Mabuza would cross the floor and Cyril would be in charge. But I think right. Cyril's blown all his political capital with those sort of people. They're not going to support him anymore. But where's ABSA? Where's, you know, Standard Bank? Where's, you know, FNB? Why aren't they standing up? Well, when you look at the board of directors, mm -hmm. and they're friends of mine then, Konko Sawazi, 
great guy. I think he's on the board of one of those banks or right. MTN. Right. You know, he's still probably thinking, oh my God, I've, you know, my mum was saved by the ANC. How am I going to reject them? He's got to stand up and say, enough's enough. Sela Monaco, I love him. He's got to stand up, enough's enough. They're all sitting on right. those boards. You know, Paul Henratty, he's got to say, enough's enough. Publicly, publicly. those. But boards a lot of those up. guys on boards, I mean, they were blessed by the politicians to be on those boards. I mean, if 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 the ANC, the Tula House, were to say to Standard Bank or to Annette Bank or any other bank, look, you have these very problematic people on your boards. We kind of work with you. Because they also depend on uh, government uh, um, uh, contracts, right? So they're going to, you're going to remove them. Look at what happened to Sipo Pitiana. You know, if they, if it, the minute you start speaking out against corruption in government, you're out and people, the people it's misunderstand. Too late. Sorry, yeah. you spoke out. You're brave. I spoke out. Look at where you I'm. lost. You lost deals and opportunities. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's cost me millions. I yeah. can tell you specifically how. But it's no excuse anymore to hide in the shadows like these mm-hmm. boards of directors, these big companies are doing. It's no excuse anymore to say business and politics shouldn't mix because it's already mixed. Sure. You know, I don't want to pick on <laughs> Discovery again, but they support the NHI which we know any rational person knows it's going to bankrupt our country. You know why Discovery, Mr. Chairman of Discovery, some guy sitting in England, supports the NHI? Because they're going to make a lot of money. Right. It's, it's right. immoral. They right. have forced vaccines for COVID. I think they might have yeah. lifted them. And they were firing people or off of saying they would fire people that didn't mm. have the vaccine. Yeah. I mean, what I are think- you know, that's, that's, pernicious what yeah. discovery the discussion does. about the role of business is a really important one uh, uh rob because we and, and a lot of people get angry with justification that we tend to focus on the wrong that is done by politicians but a lot of times there's partnerships there are partnerships between people in government and people in the private sector if we look at state capture look at how the banks you know i teach online when I get paid into my standard bank account, it's a small amount. I do. I mean, you don't get rich from being a teacher, right? I get questions. I have to fill in forms. What is this payment for? No, 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 because it's coming from outside South Africa. But these Guptas and the Zoomers and all these guys, they move millions through these banks. There's no indication that at any point somebody stopped them and said, wait a minute, what's this money about? So the banks, the banks, the audit firms, the audit profession in South Africa, they are quiet, but they have profited and enabled state capture and corruption. I agree. I mean, you, we know McKinsey was guilty. We know Bain was guilty. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, they're going to be law firms of plenty, like Verksman's going to out of the woodwork are going to be saying, you know, are going to be accused of bad behavior. Right. And discovered to have facilitated these things. You know, it's KPMG, bad, SAP, bad. You know, we know that already. But it doesn't mean all of business is bad. There are a lot of people that have, you know, straight stayed true and honest and moral like you have. And people have stood up, you know, Moletti and Becky have stood up, um, right. you know, Benedict Dubé has stood up, you know, but it's right. not the big guys sure. in the main. You know, Johan Rupert has stood up. He has been tough, but, you know, he got then beaten up, you know. You know, they ambushed him in that interview. That was very really unpleasant. So if he, we need courage. And it's not yeah. just business people. Right. It's celebrities right. too. I think, and, you know, celebrities like, oh, you know, my sport is rugby or my sport is this. I can't risk saying anything. Well, the time's coming when yeah. they're going to, they really need to all together stand up and say enough's enough. Please electorate vote for DA, Action SA and the good guys. They need yes. to stand up. I had a discussion with uh, a group of um, political uh, leaders a number of weeks ago. Musim Amani was one of them. Uh, Mashaba, uh, Holomisa and uh, Peter of Grunewald. And I said to them, you know, up to now, we, you guys in politics, in active politics, you, you want to, to go into elections and then after that compare notes, you know, compare percentages and then decide, okay, I'm going to go into a coalition with so-and-so and so. If you think about it, Rob, the ANC came into power because South Africans came together to say, we don't want to party anymore. There were people who were in the end conscription campaign. There were people from Indian groups and black groups and NGOs. Everybody got together. They didn't necessarily philosophically agree on everything else, but they said, we don't want apartheid. 
And I think that when South African political parties think they can still go in there, everybody wants to be president. I'm sorry, Musi wants to be president, Mashaba wants to be president, Olomisa wants to be president. You know, now there's a new fellow, Songi Son, 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 Son who's going around saying he wants to be president. I mean, they're going to end up with a few, uh, and see if the ANC will give them a few portfolio committees to chairs and they'll feel happy about themselves. I don't do think South Africa needs all these guys to get together before the elections, not after the elections, to say, guys, let's do it for South Africa. It doesn't have to be you who, who cuts the ribbon afterwards. 100%. You know, Helen Ziller made a speech at the Biz News Drakensberg Conference, BNC3. You've got to watch it. It's, it's bang on the money. Now, I think she's the best. She and France Korea. Love, love the, whatever they say. I haven't and, seen that. I, I, I look out for it. I look out for it. Yeah. And, you know, she did a triangle. And uh, the, think of the triangle as the ANC. And then one side is the EFF, which is totalitarian, fascist, yeah. racist, you know, the lunatic, the lunatic fringe, okay? But anti-ANC. And on the other side are all the people that believe in constitutional democracy and capitalism, free markets, you know, the judiciary, blah, 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 the good guys, you know. And, and the DA has anchored that corner. The DA is sitting at 20, 21, 22% today. Right. So if everybody's going to come together, they've got to come together around the DA's platform. The DA is the anchor of the coalition. And, you know, but they're the not ANC, going to do that. They will, no, they will. They have to. They have to. Let's assume, okay? Let's assume the, the DA stay at 20%. It's called 20% in 2024, okay? Yeah. The action essay, let's say it's 10%. Okay, I'm just making up numbers now. So we're at right. 30, okay? You know, in Carter, VF Plus, COPE, and ACDF, pull in another 10, okay? We're at 40%, okay? 40% plus. The ANC has now fallen to 40. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then there's the EFF and all other bits and pieces for the rest. I mean, you have no option but to try and make a coalition. Helen's belief, Helen's and Liz's belief, mm -hmm. which I'm not convinced about, but I'm open-minded, is that the ANC is going to split in some way. You know, so it'll fall apart. If Cyril doesn't get elected, whoever the good guys are, and you didn't tell me another name other than Cyril, I mean, Enoch, Enoch, our finance minister, he's a good guy, for sure. He's he and Cyril. Enoch, need to, I won't call him Enoch. Godongwana. Godongwana. He's yes, he's, he's okay. in the Cyril camp. Yes. I don't call him good, but I call him better than the monsters on the other side. You know? <laughs> and they're not that many of them, but if they split out, I think they could form some sort of the real ANC or the ANC 2.0 or the ANC 1.0, you know, and then no, team, up, no, team no, up with the coalition. No. You don't see it? No, you know, Rob, people who are born and bathed in the African National Congress don't leave the African National Congress easily. They, they will, they, and they always look on which side of their bread is buttered. All those people, if Zuma becomes president again, they will say, look at where them and Tasha, how, how, how they all flip, 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 because in the name of the ANC, they must keep the party together. Ramaphosa kept quite all this. Yes, he saw, he, he's not even telling us what he had, what he saw when he was deputy president, because, and he came out and said, listen, my role is to, to keep the ANC together. They will keep the ANC. I promise you, I've worked, I've spoken to many ANC people. At the end, they want to save the ANC. Even the, the, the so-called Save Our Democracy campaign people, they want to save the good side of the ANC. It's, un, they don't, it's they unsavable. They cannot imagine South Africa without the African National Congress. And the things, bring, and to your point about the ADA, I see the percentages, but South Africans tend to be too... Uh, either they like or they do dislike a brand, a, a, a political brand. And there are also too many other South Africans who have not voted. If you look at the number of vote, where people who voted, who are, who are registered to vote, who have not voted, it's still quite high, especially in the young people. I think that a new brand is needed. It is, all these people must leave their, 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 their um, um, egos aside and say, let's work for South Africa. DA, AFF, or, not AFF, sorry. DA so, and all the other good guys that you mentioned. <laughs> and then so, so let's create a new brand and attract South Africans into a post of ANC future. But the minute you, you keep pushing your own brand, no matter how good it is, there's all those people who don't want DA for whatever reason, no matter how what you say to them, for them to jump from the ANC to support a DA idea. If the DA were to say to many of them, there's a train coming, get over the tracks, they will stay there because the DA is saying so. 
Yeah, but that's, I'm not going to say it, but that's, <laughs> let's just, sorry. The DA is a fact of, of life. Yeah. They started in 1994. They've been there from the beginning and they started the Cape Town, then the Western Cape. They've expanded the rest of South Africa. I had an American guest visit me yesterday. I've been to Cape Town once, but a little bit before for a day or two. And he, right. he, he said to me, it blows my mind. He said, I was in Johannesburg and Durban, chaos, falling apart. You know, I come down here, everything works. It's like going to another country. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the DA makes the difference. And I know for a fact from France Premier's research mm-hmm. that these ANC voters admit the DA does a better job. The DA is a better option. The DA know how to run the business. But because of this emotional attachment, mm-hmm. they're struggling to migrate to right. whichever party. Correct. But it's going to happen. We've got two years to make it happen. It'll happen. The, and the ANC is just eating itself alive because all they know how to do now is break and steal. And the population, the voting population know that. Okay, it's, look, it's so Helen, Helen Zille is not the official leader of the ANC, of the no. DA, sorry. Stian Hazen is. is. Do you think Stian Hazen can, can rally all those forces around the idea that the DA can do in the rest of South Africa what it's doing in Cape Town? And I mean, oh, we can have a conversation about Cape Town. I live in Cape Town, in the poorer Cape Town, part of Cape Town, at least my home is. And the crime, I'm still on my on my neighborhood watch list. It's the crime there, home Sorry. invasions. People can't even take a walk in their own streets. It's painful. But do you blame, do you blame the, the DA for that or Becky Bailey, who's completely useless? I don't know how he gets his hat stuck on his head. I totally, uh, it's a good question. Look, I I like the DA mayor. I like Sinez and I like uh, Alan Winde. And I think, and I also do think that there must be a a, a devolving of of policing powers to the province. I totally agree. I think that if the green DA was, the DA was allowed what it must do in the Western Cape, it would most probably do a much better job than the ANC. I don't understand why the ANC seems to be allowing criminality so, to be so rampant in the Western Cape and it doesn't allow the, the provincial government there. They want criminality. criminality in the Western Cape. They want to undermine the DA. This is pure Soviet strategy. Yeah. Why do you think Mabuza's in Russia, has been in Russia? He's not sick. I He's been no told idea. what to do and given yeah. the money. It's the Soviet playbook. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. So... Yeah. So look, I don't. Th- I'm no, but, but, I don't. Then, John Steenhuisen, I don't think ever expects to be president of this country. Okay, mm-hmm. I, d- I really think he doesn't expect that. But he and Helen and the DA team know they can anchor a coalition, mm-hmm. and who knows who will be president? Yeah, but but uh, Rob, I, I mean, this is a very important point. You're looking at the DA from a what they can do perspective which i do not disagree with but i'm looking at them from the emotional perspective which we cannot un- uh, under underplay in south africa emotions and projects are huge people as i said earlier if the da were to say there's a train coming behind you get, get off the track they won't move because it's the da even when the da is correct so that's why i'm saying the da people need to say okay our brand still pushes a lot of people away it creates wrong conversations even though we know we have it in ourselves to do some things many things right how about we create a new uniting okay. brand for south what? africa to live so in can I, even though we'll me, play a central role in it let me test that let me because i know where you're heading but let me test that for a second there are brands out there tuli Madosella is a brand a brand for good she's she doesn't been, want to go into politics i've had that no, discussion i'm just saying that. i'm yeah. just saying yeah. Musi Mamani is a big brand, mm-hmm. okay? And he's hopefully going to re-enter politics. So before we talk about an Uber brand that sits, <laughs> sits above all of yeah. this, which I think is where you're heading, right. there are brands that haven't entered the fray yet. Mm-hmm. And there are many brands like Karu Charu, the hilarious Indian guy who I met recently from Durban. You know, he's now speaking for a bigger and bigger order. Mac G. These mm-hmm. two guys, I love to meet them. But you have a you're talking about Solly Moeng. Brand. What about I'm Solly I'm talking about individual brands, Brian. I'm, I'm talking about. I know. It could be a, an idea, an organization. Okay. But I'm talking. I'm saying, if people, if if there's a glass ceiling for the DA mm-hmm. of twenty to twenty five percent, okay, mm-hmm. which is kind of what we, you're saying. Yeah. I think there's a glass ceiling for the EFF of ten to twelve percent. By the way, but the South African population don't want. Right. destruction and chaos, which is all yeah. that mob represents. So let's say there's a glass ceiling. 
I can still think we need a couple more options in the game. You know, maybe Gaten McKenzie, Patriotic Alliance, maybe Musi Maimani, but it's getting late. There's two years to go. So to right. create, if for individuals to enter the market, they have to have brand equity already, which Musi Maimani does have. Mm. To create an Uber brand, that's still, let's not use Uber, a Solly brand that covers DA, Action SA, and all those parties, would people vote for that in a national election? Who would be the leader? Now you'd have Herman Mashaba arguing with Musi Mamani, arguing with you know. I think it's not going to be possible okay. to do before the election. Okay. It has to happen after. I think it can happen before the elections. So look, if you look at the French elections recently, uh, Rob, uh, the, on, for, for the second uh, round of the elections, all the parties on the left decided, look, guys, we tried to go in individually in the first round. We failed. We need to remove to reduce Macron's um, parliament and majority in the National Assembly. They got together and they reduced his, his numbers massively because they came in one under one name. So and I think it France, can happen in South, South Africa. Africa. France, South Africa. I mean, we've, no, 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 no. I mean, we've we only had the national government and the ANC for the look, last the only, years. The only <laughs> the enemy of South Africa, the only obstacle standing between South Africa. South Africans and the potential the country has is the ANC. There's nobody else. Correct. Okay. My, my, my money doesn't Correct. count. My, 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 lab, my lemma doesn't count much. Correct. Okay. You have, you can't build that South Africa while the ANC controls foreign affairs, the resources or policy making and all that. You have to move the ANC. Okay. And the only way to remove the ANC is to get together as South Africans before the elections, not after the elections, where you're going to start counting who goes what crumbs and how do we get together, who takes what position. You together, you say, let's do, let's build a united front to remove the ANC and then work on building South Africa. There's no who, way that it'll happen. Who runs this front? Well, I don't have a name. The good names, some of the good names that you've mentioned, Maimani, Mashaba, Etienne, and all, we have good South Africans. Who could they to? <laughs> That's how, about what a, how about ANC out? <laughs> yeah, there you go. ANC out. Something like that. We need to show South Africa that Ali, we might think I... this, the, the sun is setting, but the sun has not set. It's just being hidden by a huge mountain which is on which is written ANC. Let's remove this mountain and be able to see our sun again. Agreed. And I love that description. Um, one essay, activist movement founded by Musi Maimani. If you go into one essay, Dot org, they ask you to fill out who would be the great individuals. Well, I yeah. think it's 50 or 100 individuals right. that could be the right people to lead this country. And they, what they're looking for is independent candidates. And I filled it out, put your name in there, by the way. So they're going to hopefully contact <laughs> you. <laughs> I did. Um, Mark Barnes went on uh, an interview a few weeks ago, and you know he's I've known Mark since university. He's the guy right. that was offered postmaster general, took it at no cost, mm -hmm. no salary. Said he turned it around and found that the cadres, the ANC cadres, stealing and breaking made it impossible. Okay, yeah. He went on and said there are a hundred great people in this country that could do the job and turn this country around. And then they asked him, "What about names?" He didn't name names. I would have gone Solly Moeng, Musi Maimani. Siv Ngesi, Lucy Tembequayo, uh, Carlo Charo. I can go on for a hundred more, you know, uh, throwing some business people. Um, they're there. We've got the talent. We've got amazing people in this country. Yeah, but, should, uh, you know, Ian Cameron should be Minister of Police, not Becky Fairley. Yeah, mean, Becky's exactly. unqualified in pretty much anything. But exactly. That's all, but, you know, we agree, but we don't seem... Those names that you mentioned, okay, I'm not sure about myself, but all the, those people must get together before the elections and say to South Africans, here is the promise. Here's a Ian Cameron who can do a better job. Here's, this is, this is, we must promise them a post-ANC cabinet that is convincing of individuals coming from across South Africa. There's, there's so much talent, so, so much. Sully, you know, give me a cabinet position, I'll give you the minister. Energy, Kusum Kalyan. Yeah, you see, but, but then we mining, must... Mining, Lebo Ngoti. Yeah, Come on, look, technology, look. Uh, Vusi Tempakwaya, culture, right. Zivin Gersi, sport, Sia Khaleesi. So, exactly. So those people must get together before the elections, Rob, not after the elections. They must, they must make South Africans dream again. We can't wait for the elections to happen. We must say, guys, this is what we're preparing for. I'm, I'm not interested in all these people who all want to be president themselves. We must say... Of course, one of them will be president Sorry. at some point, but we must it, 
somebody who drives this whole thing just because they must be president is not the right person in my view so Solly, i'm making you head of home affairs okay in my <laughs> cabinet okay do you like home that affairs. Home affairs. <laughs> i mean you've got to fix it you know Aaron is <laughs> incompetent, <laughs> incompetent he can't yeah, but do you it. Know, okay yeah, yeah that's interesting so why don't we do it instead of talking about it let's get your we'll father, get it. the get worldview yeah to fill in the gaps, get people to say this person in this role, and let's create a virtual cabinet. And we have put started their bios and CVs. Yeah, we which... have started those conversations, and we will complete. And there was a lot of buy-in in, in, in a lot of conversations that we've had about the need to do. There's no way that we can keep thing, uh, doing things over and over, over again the same way and expect different outcomes. 2024 so, is big for South Africa. We agree in Cameron as Minister Police. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now, here's a question for no, you. Sorry, you can be foreign affairs. Solly Moeng, Minister of Home Affairs. Yeah, accept? Like foreign affairs. And, uh, right, and, done. And, so we got and, two already, okay? I want to say to Joel, well, listen, this great country. Look, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting. Look, um, uh, Rob, Gates and McKenzie, people have a lot of mixed reactions about him. Some people call him a Tsotsi, unreliable, all that. And you seem to love this, too. What's, uh, what's, what's your view of Rob McKenzie? What I don't like is his alliances with the ANC in these various municipalities. But he explained to me that he's got to keep his flexibility. He can make a difference there. He's believed that certain councillors, ANC councillors, actually want the right thing for the country. And he can work with them and make things happen. He's proven he can do the job in the central Karoo by rolling up his sleeves and, you know, doing things, practical things the ANC hasn't done in since they started right so he's he's delivering results on the ground um he he's an extraordinary guy I and mean, for someone who had had a, the most different background to someone like me you know he is a capitalist he's right. anti-communist he says it in his speeches he doesn't like the communists and nor do i and nor do you i mean just idiotic but he, but he, he but also he, says yeah, he also says if he comes president, he's going to throw all the Zimbabweans and the DRC people out. Well, he didn't say it like that. He said, you know, there are so many illegal immigrants in this country taking jobs away from the locals, which is partly true and partly not true. Because a lot of the Zimbabweans and Malawians I know have started businesses from nothing. So they're not right. taking jobs from anyone. They're creating opportunities in the country so good for them i think they're amazing but you know the anc just let all the zimbabweans pour into the country to keep their gangster friends mugabe and mungagwe in power you know if, if zimbabwe had had hundreds of thousands of unhappy people in the country they might right. have stood up against you know they might have overthrown that government but they're all here and they're very productive and literate people so he, people should not be allowed to come here illegally end of story Right. And, and Gaten does say, you know, if there's a skill, a highly skilled person, they should get a visa. I could bring a hundred <coughs> international tech billionaires into this country overnight that yeah. would like to live here three, six or 12 months a year. And the ANC won't allow it. Okay. But they let millions of people pour across the border. I mean, Aaron, you know, how bad are you, pal? Right, right. <laughs> He's terrible. He's a disaster. He doesn't know how to fix it. So... What Gaten says is, is correct in the sense that legal immigrants should be allowed in. You need to apply and, and, you know, if you're filling a job or creating opportunities or investing, we need immigrants. But, you know, trying to fix it after the fact is very difficult. Yeah. Okay, now talking about illegal immigrants. I mean, there was a story of the Russian lady who came here to so South Africa, invited by you, and the, I heard just two weeks ago, no, last week, Clement Magnatella on 702 was talking about that person and linking your name to it. I mean, what what is your post mortem explanation of what happened? Nothing to do with me. She, uh, you know, claimed asylum to get in, and then uh, her legal team and I know this because I, I was briefed by it. Right. The legal team sued Home Affairs, mm. and Home Affairs acted illegally. They withheld the passport, illegal. And it went to potentially the high court where home affairs would have lost. Right. So they acted illegally. Aaron acted oh. illegally. Bully boy held her passport. And uh, I think her lawyer just said to her, look, you know, 
why bother just you know accept this nonsense deal you know mm -hmm. from home affairs and off you go so you know i she was just a, a, a friend a, a invited by a friend of mine to come to my party right. and uh you know home affairs acted illegally but she, her lawyer decided, look, just leave the country. Uh, she's Come accused on. of having lied, of saying, look, I'm here as a refugee because of the, of the war in Ukraine and Russia. So, so, so war, six million war people, in Ukraine. So, well, I don't know what that was, but six million people pour across our borders. The ANC do nothing. And yet, Aaron, you know, big success story, picks on one little girl and claims it uh, as a success. I mean, wow. Yeah. You know, big boy that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. Pretty good pathetic. Point. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, Ramaphosa announced what many people uh, described as an impressive, you know, solution to fix our electricity problem last week. But I see now, uh, now analysts are coming back to say, wait a minute, it's only going to give us one thousand nine hundred megawatts, and 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 it's not going to solve everybody's problems. What do you think? Have we had time to think about this plan? Yeah, yeah. The DA has been proposing this for ten years. Mm. And Cyril now wakes up and pushes it through only because we have a complete crisis in our country. Yeah. One week before he goes to the South African Communist Party conference and says to Gwede Mantashe's completely idiotic idea of let's create an ESCOM 2.0, Cyril goes, oh, it's not a bad idea. I mean, how pathetic is Cyril and how stupid is uh, Gwede Mantashe? They can't fix ESCOM 1.0, so they want to launch ESCOM 2.0. They also want they want also want to establish a state bank. I mean, they, they can't fix sewage pipes. How are they going to establish a successful state bank? They can't maintain systems that exist already. They break and steal, and yet they want to centralize authority. Who are I mean, these people, Rob? Who, who are no, these people? They are fundamentally stupid. Some are criminals. They're clowns. It's a cabinet of clowns. Yeah. Bluntly. Do you and think the people know it? I think the po voting population know it. If I, you know, I think anyone who says the ANC hasn't loved this country is wrong. The ANC loves this country, but this government has fallen out of love with the country. What's the difference between the ANC and this government? This is the government that the ANC has put in power. They are corrupt. They the ANC doesn't corrupt. love South Africa. Come on. It did. They, well, it well, the did. ANC loves South Africa the same way an abusive partner loves his partner. That's what it is. It's basically a divorce. Yeah. You know, there was love, and now they hate, not, you know, husband and wife hate each other, yeah. but, but they're staying in an abusive relationship. We have an abusive relationship with the ANC, we the country. It's a hugely yeah. abusive relationship. Cyril, Cyril and Lala Lala, whatever he did in Namibia, has broken yeah. about 15 yeah. laws. You know, yeah. he yeah. should say, I'm guilty. I'm a bad guy. I'm resigning. Is he going to resign? No. You know, Becky Telly, completely incompetent, should have been gone long ago. Is he going to resign? He's not going to resign. Go to Mantasha. Mantasha. Even worse. Yeah. None of them. They, they have no moral compunction. They have no moral I think, spine. I think many South Africans still misunderstand how uh, the delegation of powers and and uh, the deployment of people works or functions in the ANC. Because if you think about it, we have David Mashobo, that dude who also, also spent a lot of time in Russia, uh, the friend of Zuma. He was at some point state security minister. He's still a minister. That dude is so compromised. I mean, how does Ramaphosa look these people in the eye? I mean, when he comes to say, I want to clean up, and he still has all these crooks around him. I mean, like, it's disgusting. And South Africans believe that. I, my wife's a New Zealander. Right. She's just mind, but she's. Blab flabbergasted, there's the word. She's flabbergasted at the stupidity and incompetence of the current cabinet. I would love to be a fly on the wall at one of their meetings. I guess half of them don't read the documents. The other half are asleep at the table. You know, they're probably doodling in the corner, making stuff up. One person says one thing, another says completely different. Cyril is no leader. And then they go for coffee and wander off and do whatever they want to do. Yeah. It's a yeah. cabinet of clowns. We spoke about elections earlier. We haven't spoken about um, the Independent Electoral Commission. What are your views? 
the ANC is trying to game the new electoral bill. So it's yeah. not directly proportional. So the more you get, the more seats in parliament you get. Now that has to be killed. I think December the 10th is when this goes through parliament, mm -hmm. the new election. The independent candidates, I think is a very interesting development, you know, where people actually vote for someone they know, a local person that they trust and like. Right. Instead and of- they, And they can ANC give him a kick in the butt if they're not happy with them. Correct. And if you say to your electorate, I will deliver X, Y, Z, and then you go into parliament and vote against X, Y, Z, kick them out. Yeah. It's not happening but, because the moment you, you vote for the ANC, the IEC is independent, is politically secured, you know, is shielded from the African National Congress? Not entirely. So before we do IEC, let's take state the judiciary. Okay. The judiciary is yeah. compromised. I don't know how many of the lawyers, what percentage are told are cadres. I always thought the word was cadre. I think it is cadre, but we call it cadres. You know, there was a very dodgy decision that went on the River Club in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Judge Goliath. Right. You know, I would not be surprised if Judge Goliath was right up the ANC's, you know what. Yeah. Okay. Right. But there are going to be lots of those judges across the board. Maybe 30% of the judges in South Africa are owned yeah. by the ANC and judgments go wherever the ANC want to go. They know so which side of a, their bread is buttered. Bingo. And the same thing in the IEC. I reckon a couple of those people in there mm. are ANC cadres. Yeah. Perhaps so, then maybe, perhaps let's not make a general statement to say the judiciary is captured. Maybe there, there are bad elements it, in the judiciary. Part of it is captured. Part of it yeah. is captured. Not the whole thing. No way. Right. In right. fact, the pillars of democracy that weren't captured, media, judiciary, mm. treasury, 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 everything else captured. And no. to capture a judiciary means you have to replace thousands of judges. And Erdogan did that when he got elected in Turkey with a majority, changed the constitution. Mm. What did he do one week later? It replaced 6,000 judges. Now every decision goes his way. So that's mm. one way of capturing the judiciary. Okay. Right. The other way is cater by cater by cater, which the ANC has been doing. And Cyril knew it. He oversaw it. He knew about cater deployment. I mean, how, yeah. how can he claim to be the good guy? He isn't. He isn't. So IEC, I think, is somewhat influenced, is not entirely clean. But, you know, Michael Louis is a very interesting guy. I think you've met him. And he, you should talk to him about the independent candidates. Right. process that's coming in which i think is really healthy for south africa mm -hmm. um, he wants me to stand well, why would i stand for politics i hate it you know? I, and I, you I want me to go into politics no way no never ever ever ever, ever. <laughs> Rob, if you if you had a dinner to 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 arrange a really special there are two sets of dinners one you're going to invite you have to choose between tabo mbeki and Willet and Becky, whom would you choose? That's the one dinner. The other dinner, you have to choose between the, the uh, editor-in-chief of Daily Maverick and the editor-in-chief of Independent Media. Whom would you choose? Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. <Let> you... <laughs> let's, let's play a little well, bit. Yeah. I take Moletti and Becky. I take Moletti. I actually know both of them, and I like both of them. But I take Moletti. Uh, I love his economic views. I just sort of think he's got more of a... Uh, he, he'd, he'd be the one right and then i think i'd pick i mean i don't want to go anywhere near those <laughs> the gangster <laughs> independent media Ugh. no i'd take the editor of uh the daily maverick you know they do a very good job of uncovering all the nonsense right but there's a lot of toxic femininity in there let me say it and they're a bit anti-capitalist you know they're a bit left-wing you know so you know, at the moment, we're all on the same side because the ANC is so awful. And the, and the Daily Mirror do a very good job of uncovering the nonsense and reporting on it, and they write well. But when it comes to international politics, a bit too left-wing for me. <laughs> and when it comes to, you know, being anti-capitalist, I'd like to talk to the editor. Why, you know, why not right. be a bit more centrist? So I find that interesting. Okay, so... But, but uh, let me ask you... Yeah. who you would choose in those cases. I, I would go with your choices. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the dinner. I would go with your choices for sure. Um, Sonny, let me ask you a question. How's Worldview yes. doing, um, you know, 
you run a very good show. Tell we me need, how well Thank you very much. Uh, we need more version. support. That's why we always call for people, uh, for people who can support, as we, you know, uh, worldview in um, advertise on worldview. But we we getting we're reaching out more and more. Our numbers are growing. From time to time, we've had issues. I must tell you, with um, YouTube, where we invited, uh, we had a discussion on vaccines and you know and uh, COVID nineteen. And they don't like that. The minute you mention COVID-19 and vaccines, those spots suddenly zoom onto us and they say, well, you're off. So it's a pity because we can't have these with these robust uh, open conversations about some of these topics without fearing being blocked. But other than that, we, 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 in terms of numbers, we're growing, we, of course, but we need more support. We, we need more uh, people to, to be on our side. And we, because I think we have a role to play to grow um, to get more people to be to have these difficult, uncomfortable, but fun conversations about issues that affect our world, South Africa. So um, yeah, I think I um, hope that answers you. But we need support. So Solly, you're you're a I mean I was going to say unsung hero, but you're a sung hero. But do you want to mention one or two unsung heroes that are out there that deserve a bit of a hug and a bit of love for the work they do day in day out to make our country a better place? And don't say Suleiman of Gift to the Givers, because we all know what an amazing job he's doing. Oh, that's a, that's a difficult one. Uh, it's really hard. I need to, I mean, there are so many people doing so many things that are not known. I mean, I that dude who left Arthur Williams, where to leave, because, and he's, he's a lone voice out there speaking out against make what make pain uh, Bain and company did rather in South Africa. And there are others. I think we need to help those whistleblowers. What I can say is I know, and I have spoken to many people, some of them are the known ones who've written books, who've appeared on TV, who've been interviewed here and there, like Arthur Williams and others, but many others are still quiet. They are chup still because they have been kicked into that blacklist. They can't get jobs. They are un untouchable. They 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 have to say to sail below the radar. I mean the 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 the, 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 um, the radar. I can mention someone like Mono Mono Bisikalawe, for instance. He was at some point the CEO of the Cape Town International Airport. He was the CEO of of SAA when Dudu Mieni was messing up, and that guy pushed back. He pushed back hard. Even Duma did, even Zuma didn't want to to shake his hand. Okay, and people don't know about him. He never went to the Zona Commission. But that guy, if if the Zona Commission had called somebody like Mono Mono Bisika, I would say, what has Dudu been up to here? That guy would tell us. But he chose to, to stay out of it. And there are many others. There are many people who send me stuff on inbox, private emails, say, please sorry, look what's going on here, what's going on here. And of course, I don't break news, because uh, I don't have the money to fight any cause. What I do, I give the news to the right people who have the resources to investigate further. And if there's merit in a story, to put it out there. And then I can comment on the story. So uh, I think we need to do more to create an environment where South Africans who see wrong, even when they are afraid, can can confidently go somewhere and say this is happening. Because there are single mothers who are paying bonds and car car uh, payments and children to school and all that who don't want to lose their jobs, but they see things that are wrong. I know somebody from the I uh, for the for the PCR PIC for instance, who also went back to work and, and the environment was not friendly, but he, she had the courage to go uh, to the Zona Commission and said to them, this is exactly what I've seen, and she's not a junior person. So we have to protect these people, but we, oh, we have to create an, an environment where South Africans can stand up and say, what is happening here is not good, we need to stop it, and those people right. must be protected. So you're saying the same thing as me. You have courage. I have courage. We put our necks on the line. We tell it like it is. More people need to do it. Yes. Business people. It's not just the poor whistleblowers that then yeah. lose their jobs and come of under course. pressure. We need yeah. big business yeah. to show a bit of courage and call it out for what it is and stop yeah. hiding behind whatever yeah. they're hiding behind. Exactly. You know? You know, Why I... should the lawyers, the journalists be the ones fighting the fight continually? Exactly. We need yeah. support. We need big yeah. businesses to grow some I... spine. I kind of like uh, Professor Wiseman Kutlu. He was at some point the chairman of KPMG, and I wrote quite a number of articles about them. Uh, but he he said something to me in a discussion that the problem with the with the the edit the audit company business auditors and you know all those people is that they do not place public interest at heart. Okay, it's all about how do we retain the client, how do we 
when to, how do we have the client get out of trouble even when the, the client is committing crimes against the collective interest of South Africans so we need to get to a point where these people say no but I'm, I'm, I'm sure we would love to have another contract with you but what you're doing here is wrong and they're not doing that how do you get those guys to say public interest first South Africa has been messed up big time many people have kept quiet we can't allow that to happen again speak truth to power yeah grow some spine and, and look and spineless. We, and we mustn't lie to anybody there are always consequences for speaking truth to power i mean those of those people who want to speak loudly must be allowed to do so uh but they must know there are consequences but those people who, are, who want to have an avenue to expose or to block stuff that is wrong for South Africa must be given these avenues without hurting their livelihoods. Easier said than done, but I think Easier the more that's, done. you know what will happen? The more that stand up, the more will stand up and there'll yes. be a flood and suddenly the people that didn't stand up, yeah. they'll be latecomers and will remember who they are. They'll get Correct. the white feather of cowardice. So Rob, uh, we're almost coming to the end of the discussion, but I have to ask you this. Was there a question that you hoped I would pose and that I have not posed? Something that you think has to be out there? The, the, there's, there are so many that my head would spin. Um, maybe you could ask me, is this my real hair? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> no, sorry, I, okay. I, you, you do a super job and I really appreciate it. And, uh, now, I love I what you're doing. Thought. Well done. Thank you. I have a thought though before we you know do you think south africa needs a a, a benevolent dictator a la rwanda to get out of, i mean look at the rampant criminality it's the laws that we have sometimes seem to protect the criminals do we need somebody to come in and say boom jail boom jail or, or not really no a government of the da action sa in carter vf plus cope and ACDP will put people in those positions who will then put people underneath them that will get the job done. We don't need that. Okay. You know, if you take you as Minister of Foreign Affairs, you'll open the country for business. If you put Ian Cameron as Minister of Police, we will cramp down on crime. Mm -hmm. No, we, we don't need a bill of dictation. Okay. But, but we have seen also that um, you can have all the brilliant democratic institutions in place if you put schmucks at the head of those institutions they will people individuals go rogue somebody you put power or too much money into the head of somebody boom they go rogue on you so we do need to look at the checks and balances there are systemic changes it's not just a change of people that we need at the head of South Africa, but we need to say how did this happen and how did it happen for so long what do we need to change to make sure it never happens again 100 agree I vote for you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. I really, I really appreciate you. You know that. Anyway, to the viewers out there, if you've come this way, this far with us, you've obviously enjoyed this discussion with Rob Hersop. I'm sure he will come back in the future. Please continue to share our videos, and you know, and if you want to support us, of course, you can write to us at worldview.help at gmail.com, and please also subscribe to this channel. I'm Solim Wang, Worldview. Thank you very much and goodbye Rob. <laughs>